Hey everyone, in this video, I'll be going over day 23 of Advent of Code 2022. In this video, I'll be doing explanations, going through my solutions and thought process for both parts of today's puzzle. Today's puzzle was a little bit easier than previous days, I think, because um, you can even tell from the leaderboard times that rank 100 solved it in 24 minutes and 43 seconds, which is a lot better than yesterday's like one hour. But anyways, I'll be going over my solutions in detail. And if you want to check out my code, that's going to be linked below. The GitHub repository contains my solutions to all previous days, or at least it will. Still missing days 16 and 17, I'll make those up sometime. But we're going to start with a time lapse of me solving day 23. Okay, today was a fairly straightforward rules processing simulation day, a nice break from the difficult algorithmic problems we've gotten on previous days, but I'll go through the puzzles um, in detail in this video. So first of all, um, describing the puzzle, we have first reunited with the elves at the base of a large volcano, and it turns out that the starfruit needs volcano ash to grow, and this volcano is about to explode soon. So there are some magma flows nearby, and there's an ash cloud um, that's coming to sort of fertilize the starfruit. Um, hopefully it'll work out. So we have the locations of the elves inside this little like grove. And they're going to move around according to a set of rules to spread out some seedlings. We're given the rules, we need to figure out how the elves are going to move. So how the elves move are, um, every round there are two steps. The first step is the elves consider or propose a location to move to. And the second step is the elves actually moving. To figure out the location that each elf should propose to move to, they have a list of priorities of the locations that they'd like to move to. So first of all, if possible, they'd like to move north. So if there's no elf in either the north, northeast, or northwest locations, then the elf will propose moving north. If there's no elf in the south, southwest, or southeast locations, the elf will propose moving south. Similarly, for west, it scans along each of those three squares along the western um, adjacency adjacent blocks and if there are no elves there it proposes moving west um same for east it scans east northeast and southeast so uh it will go in this order each elf will go in this order deciding which location to move to if possible i don't think the puzzle really details what happens if none of these four options are available but i think we can just assume that each option is available um, another catch to note which i actually uh, messed up while i was coding and caused me a few minutes of debugging was if um, there are no elves if there are no adjacent elves around the current elf then they don't propose anywhere to move to so any isolated elves will just stop moving entirely and the reason for this is because they want to spread out um, the seedlings far enough they don't want to be too close together when they scatter the star fruit seeds so the elves um each elf now has a location that they propose to move in now they need to actually move in those locations so the trouble might be that two elves might propose moving in the same direction for example if we have two elves like this and they both propose moving in that direction then they will bump into each other and that's not allowed so each elf will only move to their proposed location if there are no other elves proposing to move to that location um, we already know that that location will be immediately unoccupied um, because like we check in that direction first to see that it is unfilled um, but some other elves might propose moving in that direction too so we need to prevent that from happening so in that case none of the elves move if there is a uh, shared proposal location so uh, for part one the answer is going to be at the ends of all of this the elves will determine their bounding box so we take their minimum x and y coordinates and like construct a box around them and the answer is going to be the number of unfilled cells um, inside that box so the number of like uh, open pieces of grove that are not occupied by elves in this example, we have like a 11 by 12 grid and there's uh, 110 unoccupied locations. Okay, so to actually put this in code, it's not terribly difficult. The first thing I did was encode each of the directions as an integer from one to eight because there are eight adjacent squares around each elf. Um, and these are going to be locations zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Zero is going to be um, east. One is going to be northeast. Two is going to be north. 3 northwest, 4 west, 5 southwest, 6 south, and uh, 7 southeast. So this is basically starting from that direction and working our way around um, counterclockwise. You can see that's encoded in this array over here called DERS. And if you did today's puzzle, sorry, if you did yesterday's puzzle or you uh, watched my video, you'll know that encoding this uh, correctly is pretty important. 
So anyways, these are all just vectors describing the change in row and column when moving in a given direction. Now we have this checks array, which basically is just the list of priorities that each elf wants to move in. The first element in this list is going to be the directions that the elf wants to check to make sure that they're unoccupied. And the second element in the list is the direction that the elf will move in. So these are north, south, east, and west, I believe. Um, let's just double check that. Sorry, it is north, south, west, and east. So that's two, six, four, and zero. Oh, by the way, one thing I missed at the end of every round after the elves have finished moving, they will update um, their, their proposal priorities. So north will instead become the last priority and each elf will try to move south first. And then after that round, the south will move um, down and west will instead be the priority. So once we have those two things in our code, um, we can just parse the input. I mean, this is pretty standard. We just go through all the rows and columns, uh, record their coordinates. If that cell has a pound sign in it, then we can add it to the set. Um, I'm recording everything in a set instead of like a two dimensional array because I didn't want to have to deal with uh, the bounds of a 2D array and just make it giant. Instead, using a set is a lot easier because we have a finite number of elves. So the size of this set is going to be bounded while the size of an array that contains um, zeros or ones for whether each location is filled by an elf, that is not necessarily going to be uh, that tightly bounded. Okay, so we're going to simulate 10 rounds here. I think I forgot to mention that. We are going to simulate 10 rounds of this, so stage one, stage two, stage one, stage two, 10 times, and figure out the number of unfilled squares. So let's take a look at this. Oh yeah, this function up here is just for debugging. We don't need to look at that. Okay, so we're going to loop through all the elves and put their proposed uh, moving locations into this dictionary. So looking at all the elves, we're going to first check if it has any neighbors. And to see if it has any neighbors, we just look at all of those eight cells. If any of those contain an elf, then we can go ahead. Otherwise, if it's fully alone, then we can just stop. So now we can assume that this elf has at least one neighbor and it will choose a location to propose to move to. Um, we go through this list of priorities. So we have the locations that we need to check, the directions that we need to check, and then the direction that we want to move to if all of those directions are unoccupied. So check DERS is going to be those three locations that we need to check. For each of those directions, we're going to get the uh, vector that is associated with moving in that direction. We're going to check if the square in that direction is filled. If it is, then we are not good to move inside this proposal, or rather this like thing within the list of priorities, and we can break. Otherwise, all of those three squares are unoccupied and we can go ahead and fill that square in our proposal. So we just figure out um, the direction that we are supposed to move in. We propose moving in that direction by inserting it into the dictionary. We should also increase the number of elves that have that location as their proposed location, as this will come in handy later when deciding if two elves, two or more elves are going to try to move to the same location. So now we have all the locations that the elves are trying to move to inside this dictionary. We're going to have a new set for describing their new locations called new elves. Um, I just realized we probably could have made this an array instead of making it set, but making it a set makes it more efficient for searching whether squares are occupied or unoccupied. So there's that. Now we're going to try to move all of the elves in their locations. So for every single elf, um, we're going to look at its proposed moving location. If that location is uh, having let's see, more than one elf um, that wants to move there. So this elf and at least one other elf, then we, we cannot move there. And we instead just add um, the current elf's location to this new elf set. Otherwise, there is exactly one elf that can move to that location, which is the current elf that we're looping through. And we can add that elf or add the new location into the new set to um, describe that the current elf is going to move to that location. Um, if the elf has not proposed moving anywhere, this might be that it's uh, just isolated and doesn't want to move, or it could mean that all of its four locations have run out, which again, the puzzle doesn't necessarily specify what happens in that case, but we can just kind of brush over that. So if an elf does not propose moving anywhere, then we keep it where it is and add its current location to the new set. After doing all of that, we need to update their list of priorities. Again, remember that's moving north to the bottom. So we're just going to take all of the elements of this priority array and move the first element to the last by doing this fancy Python list slicing thing. Basically, just taking every element after the first and then adding the first element to the end. That just kind of rotates everything. And then a very important step, we have to actually update the else set to be a new set of locations. Um, I messed up on that for a couple minutes. So very important to keep track of that. Um, we should probably not increment uh, round by one. At the end, we, we need to figure out the bounding box of all the elves. So this is a fairly straightforward operation. We're just going to loop through all the elves and take their min max um, with the rows and columns. 
So that's this function over here. It takes in a set of elves and returns the bounding box in terms of the minimum row, minimum column, um, maximum row, maximum column. So we literally just go through all of the elves and update these four numbers as we go with the current elves row and column. And at the end, we're just going to have this bounding box given by these four lines. So once we have the bounding box, we can get its area because um, that's what we're asked to find. We actually have to subtract all of the locations that have elves because those are not um, unoccupied. So the basic formula is empty ground tiles equals width of bounding box times height of bounding box minus number of elves inside. Um, I tried to do this first by actually iterating over everything and seeing if a cell contained an elf or not, but we can be a little bit more clever here and just subtract the number of elves from the total area to get the number of uncovered ground squares. Okay, so that's a part one. For part two, what we have to do is simulate this process not for 10 rounds, but until all of the elves stop moving. So this is a not too difficult of a uh, an extension. This just requires a couple more modifications. So we start again at round one. Well, actually, we start at round one instead of starting at round zero because that just reduces the amount of off by one errors we're going to make. Um, and we're just going to keep simulating them. So while true, and we are going to stop when the length of the proposal dictionary is zero. So this means that none of the elves have proposed a location to move to because they are isolated. Once that happens, once no elves have a proposal, we can print out the round number because we're asked to find the round um, after which no elf moves. So once we have that, we can break, stop the loop, and then we have our answer. Surprisingly, this doesn't take that long to run, and I assume this is because the elves like moving algorithm actually separates them pretty fast and there's not too many elves to start with. Actually, there's quite a lot. There's like, uh, I guess it's a 74 by 74 box, which there can't be that many elves inside. They spread themselves out pretty quickly. Um, in my case, it was 1,069 rounds. So my solution ran in about two seconds, or probably more than two seconds, more, maybe more like five, but didn't take that long. All right, and that's it for day 23. It was nice to get a little break from those difficult algorithmic puzzles that took hours to solve in the previous few days. Um, it was nice to have something easy and just relax for a little bit. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave that down below. As always, my code is going to be in the description if you want to check that out, so check out that link. And uh, that's pretty much it. We're almost at the end here, so I'll see you tomorrow for day 24. Thanks for watching.